We have seen the use of Bauhaus motifs transferred across virtually every design platform. The movement began in a small school that was cut short in the 1930s as German politics changed, but its principles laid down the foundation for the rest of Europe to follow. One of the most notable names to use the minimalistic approach with his creations in the 1960s was the famed industrial designer Dieter Rams, whose work has inspired generations of designers, one of the most celebrated being Jonathan Ive of Apple. But instead of talking about the limelight designers, we will instead focus on a man by the name of Hans Hilfiger, a Swiss engineer who not only pioneered the concept of the fitted kitchen, but in 1944 created a clock that now is a characteristic of all Swiss railways. For those of us who live outside of Switzerland or have never had the opportunity to travel there, we haven't seen these clocks in use. But like the symbolic London Underground logo or the New York subway, the Swiss Railways clock can be found everywhere. At every station, on every platform, it's an icon. Mondain as a company has taken the influence of the Swiss clock design and incorporated the format into their watches, and it is absolutely brilliant. There are only a few that have taken such an approach and executed it successfully, Nomos being one of the names of horology. In fact, one of the first watches I ever owned was made by Braun, a piece that also prides itself on German design influences, very much akin to Junghans. The model reference number for your interest is the BN0032, with an integrated mesh bracelet, simple dial layout, with excellently thought out spot colors. I highly recommend it. But what gives the original railway clocks such a unique character is the method of how the seconds hand sweeps the dial. It takes 58 seconds for the hand to complete a full cycle, and as it reaches the top of the dial, it pauses and holds while the minute hand moves to the next plot. It is quite the horological feat for clockmaking, and the best part about the mundane line of pieces is that they have managed to reproduce the same effect with their watches, specifically on the stop-to-go model that will be the foundation of the discussion. Watching the sweep is something well worth your time, and I will link to a short video done by Worn and Wound in the corner of the screen now. So after seeing it function, you might be asking yourself why it might be important. Sure, it's a nice looking feature, but what is its intended purpose? Simply put, in a place like a train station, a place where time and scheduling is important, having an accurate reference time is very useful. And this pausing of the hand at the 12 allows anyone to easily synchronize their watches to the time. The action of the hand, how it pauses and proceeds, it feels like the very essence of timekeeping, which is why it is such an interesting novelty for watch enthusiasts. There is this added touch of precision to the watch that we don't see anywhere else, and the function is mesmerizing. Now to the actual design of the watch. In many ways, the simplicity, the contrast of the dial, it's in its own class. The general layout of the dial very much feels like a clock that has been miniaturized, but that doesn't detract from its position. As I've mentioned in discussions before, when you are working with a watch that emphasizes simplicity, you have to be clear that every aspect is covered well, because there is so little on the dial in the first place, and any kind of jarring error to the proportions or the scale can visually put people off. So the word legible doesn't really do this piece justice. Not only are the indices and hands well defined, but the minute track is also just as bold. And one complaint I never normally express with the minute tracks on dials is that they are barely ever noticeable, especially on watches that are more complicated, like chronographs. Most of the time you have to squint your eyes or look at the dial harder, but this dial format is so legible that you are capable of telling the time to the minute at a glance, and that is difficult to do at the best of times. Notice how prevalent the baton format is throughout the dial, including how the hour and the minute hand extends. They are both excellent lengths. Not getting in the way of each other and being of different thicknesses, they are easy to tell apart. And what completes the dial is the seconds hand. Not your typical straight hand, but a lollipop style seconds hand. This color contrast and rounded form amongst the straight and angular elements makes it very easy to see. And of course, this was intentional. It remains to be seen, but maybe it attracts too much attention to itself. The cleanliness of the dial is quite mesmerizing as well, and that is not such a good thing. The problem with symmetry is that your eyes can become lost in the dial, and this is a perfect time to illustrate my point with a similar design approach of the reference 7016 Tudor Snowflake. 
I have mentioned before that this watch has one of the best dials on any sports watch, simply because it balances the conflict between the parts so well. We may not like the layout or the styles chosen, but as a purely functional instrument, it is so easy to discern the hour and the minute hands at a glance. The batons and plots are different lengths and sizes, but all the elements are related. Sharp and angular lines are used throughout. So not only do we see the symmetry at a glance, but we can also break up the dial with ease, without being trapped by the parts all looking the same. And if we now return back to the mundane, I hope you can see how this danger of balance can affect how you read the dial. This isn't such a problem with a large clock face, since you are viewing it from a distance, but as a watch, something that you place in your near line of sight, it might become a problem for some people. But the proportions of this piece is spot on. There has been mention in the past that many would prefer a smaller scale, and I would agree that a 38 to 36 millimeter size for the new stop to go pieces might benefit more wrist sizes, since the white dial makes any watch look two millimeters larger than it actually is. But the architecture and the way that the case has been handled continues to emphasize the approach taken with its minimalistic choices. There is also an ingenious crown that allows you to fine adjust the hands using a quartz module. The variety of color schemes, PVD coatings, and strap variations offer a lot of difference to the aesthetic as well. But the problem with simplicity is that it comes with a price. A lot of what you would like to see on the watch is not there, but at the same time you are left to appreciate what you have been given. The stop to go feature on these pieces is an amazing novelty, one well worth seeing for yourself and makes for a great talking point. This is what keeps the watch unique, a piece built around accuracy. It gives off the impression that this watch embodies precision. And for a watch that prides itself by following the tradition of the Swiss railway clock, this mundane does have an X factor for that reason. For those of us who prefer watches that have more to their layout, this one might not appeal to you. But as another watch that has history, development, a design that is now 75 years old, but still looks as futuristic as it did when it was first introduced, that is no small feat. It goes to show that design, correct design, can transcend time. And that is down to simplicity. A good design that is honest, thorough to the last detail, and one that ultimately consists of as little design as possible.